yeah, it's a, it's it's very it, it's very difficult to wrap my head around. Like, I have a video about the insect plagues. If you guys haven't 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 watched that video, let me explain. We have scientific evidence. We have evidence from periodicals, ship captains logs. We have uh, we have a whole plethora of eyewitness testimony that rivers of insects fell from the sky over the Atlantic Ocean and over different areas of the world at the exact same time. Only after it was admitted in the periodicals of the time that there wasn't a single insect left in England. Once human collective psyche accepted something as a fact, the simulacrum instantly went into overdrive into correcting the problem. When only a few people were talking about, how come the bees disappeared? How come there's no beetles? What happened to the earthworms? Where are all the water roaches? What happened to the spiders? How come I haven't seen a wasp in two years? When all of a sudden the scientists took it seriously and started studying, and they went out into the countryside and they dug up rocks and they looked in the countryside, and then it was reported, it was confirmed in the United Kingdom in 1867, 1869, 1871, when it was confirmed and published in the periodicals that yes, it seems to be that all the insects have, have died and vacated the United Kingdom, the British Isles. The British Isles, there are no insects left. When that happened, all of a sudden, rivers of insects fell from a simulated sky. Rivers. Chimney sweeps changed their jobs and had many of them worked overtime and whole armies of orphans were, were hired in London just to deal with the mess. Because now, these half-frozen exoskeletons and carcasses of insects buried London and they had to employ the chimney sweeps just to burn them. They had every single day they were sweeping up insects, all different kinds of insects. Ship captains had to stop what they were doing, all hands on deck, and pushing insects that were falling from the sky that were frozen. When you picked them up, they were cold. Once they thawed out, many of them were alive and, and did all kinds of, you know, move around. But within a two-year period, all new species of insects were found throughout throughout the British Isles. This is a scientifically, historically recorded fact. I can't wrap my head around this because I've read other incidences where this has happened in the historical record. Rivers of insects just falling from the blue sky. Animals falling from a blue sky. Strange objects falling from the sky that look like meteorites, but when but when investigators arrive to the scene, they find a gluey, clear, plasma-like substance spread all over the ground with a foul smell. Whole species have fallen straight from the sky. Tektites, big giant icebergs have fallen straight from the sky. We have so many reports of things that have fallen from the sky that just don't make sense. Eyewitness accounts of things that have passed through the sky that don't make sense. Things do not make sense to us because the paradigm that we have accepted. We have been told that several layers of atmosphere leads to a troposphere, an atmosphere, magnetosphere, mesosphere, all these uh, Van Allen radi radiation belts, all this crap, all these layers of the atmosphere, and then you have open void space, and then there's 236,000 miles to the moon. Then there's 93 million miles to the sun. And we, and we grow up believing this. And yet when we take a very high power telescope and we look at any star, we see nothing but an oscillating field. We don't really see a star. Same thing with an atom. In an electron microscope, we blow up an atom, we, we're ultimately left with an oscillating field surrounded, surrounded by empty void, and it's a great vast distance from the nucleus of that, of that oscillating field to the nearest electron, which when magnified also becomes an oscillating field. Every single thing in physical reality becomes non-local. It only localizes when we focus on it. So I can't wrap my head around this concept that the sky is only a, a thin barrier between us and this vast cosmos. I can't see it. It's just, I used to believe it. 
But now that I've read Charles Fort's over thousand pages of evidence on everything that's fallen from the sky, I cannot, I cannot assimilate that into my, my worldview without changing my worldview. It's impossible. My problem is, is I can't take data that I accept as true and real if it doesn't comport with other things that I found. And if 17, if 17 items of evidence show me 17 different phenomena that cannot at all happen, if, if the Newtonian physics world that we're on a planet is, is true, then I can't accept that we're on a planet because every single anomaly has to be accounted for or my paradigm is wrong. This is, this is my problem with a lot of people's logic. If you want to believe in the world that's been presented to you and, be, and been reinforced on a daily basis through the central nervous system's uh, enslavement sensorial apparatus, which is very per persuasive, and yet you want to entertain something like astral projection, how do you unify two completely disparate phenomena? Here's the material universe that you've accepted, and yet you, you want to include this right here, but you want to exclude this, this, and this. I can't do it. Every single thing in the human experience must, must in some way be explained by my worldview. Since my worldview can't explain so many of the anomalies of the ancient world, like, uh, I believe it was 1455 over Prague, it seemed like the sky just turned off and people saw what was really in the sky, not the not this holographic illusion that's been presented to us. And they didn't understand it because they had absolutely no frames of reference for mechanical machinery and all that stuff at the time. They didn't know. They just described it to it as best they could.